Hi, I'm Tim's son, Michael, visiting uh, my folks, and today my dad is going to do an unboxing and review of the T28. So Michael, thank you very much for that introduction. 800 millimeter T28, 800 millimeter in the wingspan, 31 and a half uh, inches. It's a very nice four channel bottle, uh, rudder, elevator, ailerons and throttle. It literally went together in 20 minutes. And um, it's, just, it's just a nice little kit. We'll do the unboxing here in a moment. I want to point out that there are four things you'll need in addition to this to fly your model. You'll have to supply a transmitter. You'll have to supply at least a four-channel um, receiver for the model. You'll have to apply the in-flight battery. It's a two-cell, about a 1300 uh, milliamp battery, which you probably already have. And then this is being filmed in um, late September 2023. Uh, the remote ID ruling is in effect. It will not be enforced until March 16th, 2024. But you need to be compliant with remote ID if you're not flying as a recreational pilot in an FAA recognized identification area. And there's a lot of videos on what to do to get the remote ID module. So before I do the unboxing, just a little bit of history. This was a primary trainer for both the Navy and the Air Force. It was first produced in 1950. It went through production to 1957. A little under 2,000 of these were built. A uh, very nice trainer with a tricycle landing gear, a good transition for the aircraft of that day. Still a very popular warbird uh, for people that want to buy the full-scale ones. And I think it makes a very attractive model. It should be a fun, um, fun project. So let's do the unboxing, then we'll assemble it, and then we'll uh, come back for a little pre-flight before we head out to the flying field. We'll do a quick unboxing now of the 800 millimeter T28 V2. 800 millimeters is 31 and a half inches. That's the wingspan of the aircraft. And it's a fun little, almost a park flyer, two cell battery. So nice presentation on the box. I always like that uh, plug and play operation. So the specifications, the wingspan listed here, 31 and a half inches, the length 26.3. Flying weight is just a shade over a pound. Two cell battery, 20 amp ESC. Four servos, the center of gravity, super important, is listed there, prop is included, and it's a two-cell battery. So that's the exterior box. We'll do the unboxing, the T28 now. This is the first time I've seen it. You're exploring it right with me, no damage or anything. Nice little wing, 31 half inches, and the gear is uh, fixed down with the standard clips here. It just goes in super easy. And then individual aileron servos, no flaps. And then the two holes, for screwing in the wing. There just couldn't be any easier. These are some of the parts, the landing gear right here with doors. Looks very nice. And just some extensions, screws, control our arm extensions, electrical extensions and so forth. That should be fine. Here's a fuselage. All set to go, very nice presentation. I like the yellow paint scheme for the Navy. And um, there's a little bit of tape here. So this is a magnet, it's a magnet that holds on the um, hatch. The metal there, protected for shipping and just all very simple ESC. And then the servos for the um, elevators and the, the rudder and the motors installed here. So that is fine. These are the two horizontal tail surfaces and with the elevator horns all installed. <clears throat> and then finally, the prop. These three bladed props will look very nice. And also the tricycle gear will have hopefully less of a chance of um, damage that on a nose hole just due to, the, um, due to having a nose gear. And so that's it. That's it. So we will look forward to putting this together next and then um, take it out for a test flight. The directions are good. It has a lot of information, pretty much all you need to build it. This is a list of all the parts. There's really not too much in the kit. 
I'll fill in some of the blanks on the assembly process. This is a typical instruction, just you put in the wing, put in the screws, they take it through you step by step. This is the wing. Notice that there are two leads for each aileron servo in each wing. You'll connect those with a Y connector. The two holes for the screws to hold in the wing, the aileron servos are, are already in place. Notice this little hole. You'll have to thread the aileron wires through them to get them inside the fuselage to connect it up to the uh, receiver in your fuselage. The tab just fits into the fuselage for the wing, two holes for the screws, and you're good to go. Look at some of the parts, the landing gear, the prop, the uh, Y connector for the aileron servos, the wing uh, getting ready to be screwed into place. Really not too much to put this together. The two horizontal tail surfaces, they use foam glue. I use five minute epoxy. They just glue right in place. It's an Allen wrench to put in the wing screws. Nothing hard to do there. Just screw them in and the wing is in. The wing remains in place. You don't take it apart going out to the field. Now flipping the fuselage over to look at the very roomy fuselage, you can see the two um, aileron leads from each wing. There'll be a Y connector that goes into your receiver, uh, ESC, everything's in place. Here's a look at the tail surfaces glued in. No problem there. Make sure when you glue it in, the um, control horns are down. You don't want them up and you just simply have to connect them to the two elevator push rods to complete the installation. Now to look at the inside of the fuselage, you can see each of the leads very clearly marked for elevator rudder. You simply plug those right into your receiver. You need at least a four channel receiver for this, uh, really no problem. There's the two connectors, the Y connectors for the ailerons that'll plug into the aileron port of your receiver. This is the landing gear. It's very well formed, straight. That little clip just clips up. You find the hole, you put in the landing gear, the directions show you how to do it. It's really not hard to do. And you can remove these landing gear if you wish to fly it with no gear. Finished airplane, looks very nice. The three-bladed prop adds a lot to the front of it. Just a very presentable airplane and just a nice fun sport flyer. Now it's super important to get the correct center of gravity. This is clearly discussed in the directions, the amount of distance back that you have to do. We're here today to do the maiden flight of the um, T-28. This is a 30, uh, 800 millimeter, 31 and a half inch wingspan, weighs about a pound, just a cute little airplane. Everything went together quickly, as I mentioned. You could build this in, in half an hour, just two screws hold on the wings, you glue on the tail and so forth. One thing I want to point out is it's set up for a two cell battery. The hatch is just a magnet, which is very easy. These batteries aren't very heavy uh, by their nature. So if you look at all the room in the fuselage here, don't be tempted to put the battery back here. This little slot up here is for the battery. You want that as far forward as possible to make sure that we get the proper center of gravity that checks right there. So that's an important thing with this airplane. You don't want to mess that up. So what we'll do is we'll hook up the battery, put the canopy in place, do a uh, control surface check and, and take it for a test flight. We'll do the control checks. We'll take a look at the ailerons. And that is the correct direction. I just have to triple check that. The elevator back here, up, down, rudder, left, right. And then the throttle is there. Okay, I think we're all set for the test flight. Here we go for the no kidding main in flight into the wind. Plenty of power with the two cell battery and it goes up in the air. It just feels very nice. All the control throws, everything was okay. Initial turn out of traffic, no problem. Here's your first turn. It's handling very well. Now, <clears throat> as I was just feeling out the aircraft, I like to fly slow. With this airplane, it can fly slow. Just don't get too slow. You'll see that I started to get wing rock, a little bit of tip stall as I was doing the turns out in the distance. It's a trainer, it's a high performance aircraft. I just added power, increased my airspeed. Just be careful when you're turning and you're um, at a slow airspeed, uh, just maybe keep your airspeed up a little bit. Got back under control, circle around, and then we'll come in for our final approach at landing. Very steady on the final approach for the landing. Very nice coming down, and there's your first landing.
So, super happy with the maiden flight of the T28 um, with the two cell battery. It's got plenty of power. The three bladed prop just looks wonderful. You don't see too many of those. Good steering with the nose gear steering. Good controls. I'm not going to adjust any of the controls. I will say though, and we've got to be honest on these videos here, the wing is not super big. That, that's the way the T28 is. So for this smaller model at the weight, it flies just fine. But if you get slow, you're going to start to have some stall and wing rock issues. So don't get in the habit of flying your Cub where you're very slow, just kind of stooging around in turns. This will not behave in the right way. Just keep your speed up. When you're not turning, like on the final approach, remember there's no flaps in this model. It, it's fine because you're not doing any banks or putting any load on the wing. But it's a, I would say it's just a good, honest flyer looks good it it just is a nice little airplane to have in your flying repertoire highly recommend it and um very happy with the test flight good luck with yours